Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. And we're in Chapter 4, part of this playlist that I'm calling Joint Distributions. And today's topic is Expectation, Covariance, and Correlation. Now in this section, we'll assume we have a random variable, x and y, with known density, f. And if there's any doubt, you put a subscript of the, uh, the variables. The random variable can be discrete or continuous. Let h be a function of our random variables x and y. Be a function of the random variable x and y, which is itself a random variable. The goal of this section is to find the mean value of h. So note the expressions are all equal. Mean value, average value, expected value. So to find the expected value, it's this, let x and y be a discrete random variable with density f. Let h be a random variable itself, right? It's a function of random variables, so it's a random variable. The expected value of h denoted by e of h is given by this. You take what's inside the parentheses here, take it times the density, sum over all x and y. That, now, let x and y be a continuous random variable with density f. Let h be a random variable. The expected value of h denoted by e of h is given by this. You expect the value of h and you take h times its density and grade it all over all possible values of, d, of y and x. Now, special cases of h are of great interest to us. One is just the expected value of x, denoted by the mean of x. So the expected value of x is you take x times the density summed over all values. And if you note here that x is not, you know, part of, you're not summing over the first here, which is y, so you can take it out. And if you sum a joint density over all possible values of one of the variables, then it, it's the marginal density for that. So that just leaves the sum of x, x, f of x. And so that's the expected value. And then continuous case is just the same. It's x times its density integrated over all possible values of y and x. Now the expected value of y is defined similarly. Mu of y, it's expected value of y. Take y times its density summed over all possible values if it's discrete or y times the density, some are integrated over all possible values of y and x. Now the expected value of x and y denoted by e of x, y, this expected value of x, y, it's called a, a mixed moment of order two. That's what Wikipedia calls it. It could be called a product moment of order two. And it's expected value of x, y is you take x, y times its density summed over all x and y. Or if it's continuous, x and y times its density integrated over all possible y and x. Now the expected value of x minus the mean times y minus the mean, it's denoted by, of course, e to this value. It's called a central mixed moment of order two. Central because we're subtracting the mean of that random variable from each more commonly called the covariance of x and y. So it's denoted by a sigma xy. It's a covariance of xy, and it's the expected value of this the um, central mixed moment of order two, which means you take that value times its density summed over all possible values, or that product times the density integrated over all possible values if it's continuous. Now, generally, you don't find the covariance by using the definition. You use what's called a work, working formula for the covariance, right? The covariance is seldom calculated using the definition. The following is used instead. The covariance of x and y is equal to the expected value of x times y minus the product of the means. And a quick little proof of that is, of course, the covariance of x and y by definition is this. And let's, let's take the product of these two uh, numbers. You know, some call it the FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. But x times y, right? And then the mean times y minus x times 
the mean of y and then plus the product of the means. Now since expectation is a linear operator, it goes into each of those. Notice that the mu is a, that's a constant, unknown constant. And same way for this term. And then these are just constants. So expect value of a constant is just that value. Well, notice e of y is the mean of y and e of x is the mean of x. And so we have plus mu x mu y minus that same quantity so it goes away. So we have e to the, you know, expect the value of x, y, which is this part of the formula. And then notice that the, this is the expected value of x times expected value of y minus, which is this. And so the formula is proven. Now, interpretations of covariance. Covariance is, is a measure of the joint variability of two random variables, you know about their respective means. Now the covariance is positive when x tends to be large when y tends to be large. The covariance is negative if x tends to be large when y tends to be small. They're sort of opposite. And of course it could be um, you know x small and y large either way. Now the sign of the covariance shows the tendency in the linear relationship between the variables. The magnitude of the covariance is not easy to interpret because it's not normalized, right? So if the covariance is positive, then there's an upward linear trend upward in the data. If it's negative, then there's a, it's a negative uh, sloped linear trend. Um, note that the normalized version of the covariance is called the correlation coefficient. And we'll look at that below in a second. I think theorem three. Now the covariance of a linear combination, so let x and y be a random variable and let, let a, b, c, and d be any constants. Then the following holds. The covariance between two linear combinations is just equal to a, c times the covariance of x and y. And one way to think about this is that when you add constants, that doesn't change the variability. It just kind of moves the data left or right, but the overall variability in the data remains the same. So you can just take those out and then you have the covariance of AX and CY and constants just come out of the covariance and that's what you get. And here's a quick little proof of it. There's a covariance of this linear combination by definition or and using the working formula of covariance, it's the expected value of this product minus the expected value of the means, right? So the mean of this and the mean of the second term. That's the, what we were calling the working formula for covariance. Now let's multiply everything out. So, um, you know, multi, do the four multiplications here and you get these four terms, you know, the expected value stays on the outside. Now here we, we take the expected value into each of these terms and there's only one random variable. That's why it goes into X. And then here it just, it's the same similar, you know, but it goes into the Y. C is a constant, D is a constant. Now let's um, take this expected value into each term. That's what we get. Constants come out of the expectation. BD is a constant. Now this multiplication and actually, I don't know why I don't do the multiplication from this step to this step. But if we were to do the multiplication, notice it's, you know, it's minus. And then we have B times D. That would cancel with this one. And then we would have um, Y, you know, the B times CY. And that's negative, And it would cancel with this. And we'd have A times D, you know, expected value AE times D, and that's negative, and it would cancel with this one. So pretty much every term cancels, but when we take A expected value of X times C expected value of Y, we get this. But but if we were to left factor out an, an AC, then what's left is the working definition of the covariance between X and Y, which is this term. And that's what we wanted to show. Now, the definition of a correlation is let X and Y be a random variable with density F. Let sigma XY, sigma X squared, sigma Y squared be the covariance, 
and variances of x and y respectively, then the correlation between x and y is given by this expression. So notice that the sigma xy, that's the covariance, and then we're normalizing it by these constants, these values. It's the product of the variances, square, well, the square root of the product of the variances, which really is just the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. And that's the correlation. Now, a theorem is that the correlation coefficient, rho of xy, for random variables xy, lies between minus 1 and 1. That's, it can't be anything but between there. Now I'm going to point you to a video to save time in this one. See video title, Properties of Correlation, and I have it in my playlist called Correlation, where we prove this exactly. And also let the correlation coefficient, let rho be the correlation coefficient for random variables x and y. Then rho equal to 1 or minus 1, so it's at the extremes, and that's if and only if this relationship holds. Now note that this is a formula for a straight line. So if rho is 1, then it's a straight line with positive slope. If it's negative 1, it's a straight line with negative slope. And it's a perfect linear relationship. So the correlation tells us sort of the strength of the linear relationship between x and y. And the closer they are to 1 and negative 1, the more linear-like they are. And again, we prove this exactly in that same video as Theorem 3. It's titled Properties of Correlation, and it's in my playlist called Correlation. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to call her quits. Now, this isn't a teaser joint cumulative distribution function. The next video is either going to be the joint CDF, or I might do a video on uh, bivariate random variables when one is discrete and one is continuous. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.